whenever I get one of those, I, I say to myself, why, why haven't I chosen to be a rock star or something where I can really use that? Anyway, I'd like to begin with, um, with a little story. Um, a few weeks ago, I've been diving with whale sharks. We were on a boat, and at some point the captain was shouting, jump! So I jumped in the water, and the next thing I know, I'm swimming next to this. And it's huge! And my mind immediately started working. Like, oh my god, what am I doing here? Did I really choose that? I should have chosen swimming with, with seahorses or something, something sweet, something nice, but with this creature? Blah, 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 my mind was going on. And then at, at some point, it hit me. Hmm. There's a junction here. I have a choice to make. I can either spend all this time swimming next to this amazing creature while thinking about the experience, or alternatively, I could let go of my thoughts and just be there, present, connected to this amazing thing that is happening to me. So I've allowed my thoughts to fade away and brought my full awareness to the whale shark. I found myself synchronizing my breath with its very, very slow breath. It was like... <sighs> it felt beautiful inside. And I felt so connected to it. And for some time, it might have been 10 seconds or 10 minutes, I truly don't know, everything else disappeared. And all that existed was me and that whale shark. Today, I'd like to share that junction with you. That, that moment where I had the freedom to choose where to focus my awareness. I'm going to talk about three words. Three words that allow that transformation that we discuss here as part of this conference. And those three words are awareness is freedom. Now, before I go into the actual discussion over why is it that awareness allows freedom, I'd like to run a little experiment together. Mm -hmm. Here's our focal point. So this is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to bring your full attention to this white paper. And I'd like you to keep your attention here, fully on this white paper, and try not to allow your mind to wander. Keep it there for as long as possible. I also want you to notice how much time passes from the, mo from the moment we start Till the moment your mind, whoop, goes away somewhere else. Anywhere. You might be thinking, like, well, what is this exercise? I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I need my coffee and fix. Anything that comes to your mind is perfectly fine. Just notice that your mind wandered. Okay? Great. So, bring your full attention to the paper. And we're starting now. Okay. Please raise your hand if it took you five seconds and less before your mind wandered from that piece of paper somewhere else, okay? Raise your hand if it took you five seconds or less than that before your mind has wandered. Okay, great, thank you. That's about 60% of us here in this room. I've been running this exercise for years with thousands and thousands of students, and I hear anything between a few milliseconds to five, six, ten seconds before, before our mind wanders, and I find it fascinating. It really makes me think. Because if I've asked you to bring your full attention somewhere to a certain focal point, and it only took a few seconds before your mind wandered and went away somewhere else, then I'd like to ask you an important question. The question is, who is in charge of your awareness? Who's in charge of your awareness? Surely it isn't you. You wanted to keep it somewhere focused and just keep it there, but you couldn't. It fluctuated, it moved somewhere else. So who's in charge of it? I really invite you to think about this one. This is not a theoretical or a philosophical discussion. It's a very practical issue that is influencing your everyday life. You go to work. You've got this project. You bring your full attention to the project. Very quickly, bang, your mind's gone. Wonder. You might be sitting with a friend, someone who's meaningful to you. You really want to keep your full attention, full awareness with this other person. And yet, tomorrow's tasks and other issues in your life keep on pulling you away from that presence, from that connection. You might even find yourself, at the end of the day, in bed, exhausted. 
just wishing for this chatterbox to stop. But it's as if it has life of its own. And all of that, it makes me wonder, are we free? There are many different definitions to freedom, but one, one prominent understanding is the idea that freedom is the condition of being free of restraints. Hmm. So in the context of that, ask yourself, am I free? Are we free? And my answer would be no, we are not. As long as we are restrained by our mind's automatic activity that is so powerful that no matter what you want and where you want to be, you're being pulled away from that, you're not free. You're not free to choose where you wish to be at any given moment. That's important. You're not free because you don't have the choice. Now, wh wh what is that choice? We need to focus on that choice for a second. Any moment when you engage with the moment, you can choose between two different options. You can either think about the moment. And thinking is very important for our lives. We need to be able to make decisions, to compare between options, and see what's best for us. That's great. We need to think. The problem is that we have lost the capacity to turn it off. We have lost the option to say, stop, enough. Right now, all I want to do is just be here peacefully, quietly with this experience. I want to be here fully with this conversation. I want to be here fully with this experience of sex. I want to be here fully with this sunset. Whatever it is, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to interpret it. I just want to be here fully connected to it. In many ways, that is my experience with the whale shark that I described earlier. That is the second option. That's the option of being. Hmm. We have lost that option. Our mind is working automatically. We have very little control over that activity of the mind. It might be easier to think about it in the context of someone else's words. Anyone knows who this guy is? That is now Sparkly. Thank you. So um, those are the first 10 seconds from his song, Crazy. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my was right. It's much more fun than being a lecturer. I love these words. I love these words. And the way I think about it, the way I think about it, it's this space that is being created when your mind's gone, when your mind's lost, when the thinking doesn't conquer all that space. And then your awareness can just be there, connected to the experience, whatever it is that you go through. And we're talking about a balance. It's really important to remember that. Thinking is part of our lives. We need to be able to do that. But just as much, we need to be able to be. Think about it as you think about breathing. If you only breathe in, you choke. Right? And we are choking on our own thinking. We need to learn to exhale. And then have that in and out, in and out. That's the balance of life. That's the balance of thinking and being. In reality, we've lost that balance. We don't have the, the, the capacity to choose between those two options, as we've seen with the, with the experiment with the paper. I mean, very quickly, our mind moves away. Where does it move? To the first option, the option of thinking. And the crazy thing is, that we take it for granted. We approach this whole thing as if this is an unavoidable part of life. As if the situation where our mind just wanders and goes wherever, wherever it wants is an unavoidable part of life. But what I'd like to share with you today is that this isn't the case. You can live differently. You can live with the choice as to thinking or being. 
Now, there are many different tools to achieve that state, many different tools to achieve that option. I'm going to talk for a minute about the tool that I found to be the most efficient one, and that is the tool of meditation. When we experience concentrated meditation, we bring our full awareness to a certain focal point. The focal point doesn't matter. It might be some visual imagery. It might be sensations in the body. It really doesn't matter what it is. The point is that you keep your awareness there with that focal point. And at some point, your mind will wonder. But because you're meditating, you will notice, oh, my mind wandered. So you bring it back to your focal point. And then your mind will wonder again. And again, you'll bring it to the focal point and again and again and again, you'll do it hundreds of times. You'll do it thousands of times. You will do it hundreds of thousands of times because what you actually do is you are retraining your awareness. You are retraining your mind so that you'll have the option of being. You'll have that choice between those two situations, two ways of engaging with the moment. You could choose between thinking and being. You'll have the freedom to choose. And in many ways, we've, we've closed the circle and we went back to a basic assumption. The idea that awareness is freedom. And I hope that, that this talk and the ideas that I've shared with you encouraged you to accept how precious this awareness is and how important it is for us to connect to it so that we could have the choice and experience the freedom. Because awareness is freedom.